Number six, suppose a horse leans against the wall as in figure 9.30. Calculate the force exerted on the wall, assuming that uh, force is horizontal while using the data in the schematic representation of the situation. Note that the force exerted on the wall is equal in magnitude and opposite direction to the force exerted on the horse, keeping it in equilibrium. The total mass of the horse and the rider is 500 kilograms. All right, so here's our picture. It's a little confusing because there's arrows right all over the place and values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a straight line here, uh, and this line will kind of represent an axis uh, that we can place all of our uh, forces and distances if necessary on, okay? So I'm just gonna draw that over here as well. Now let's call this point right here where the horse's feet are, that would be the axis of rotation. Okay, so that little dot right there is the axis of rotation. What I'm gonna do next is I'm next uh, going to put in the weight of the horse along this uh, rigid line. So as you can see in the picture, I mean, it doesn't line up perfectly, but uh, we're gonna have to align everything on this one axis just so that we can solve the problem. So the center of gravity here will be, I'll choose this particular location. And I'm gonna extend the line uh, far past where um, uh, far past where the axis of rotation is. Let me just move that a little bit. Uh, that'll help us figure out where the lever arm is, okay? Uh, so this particular uh, force here is the weight of the horse, right? Now they gave us the mass and we know gravity, so therefore we can find the weight. That's not a big deal. Uh, what is a bigger deal though is if we can find the lever arm in uh, for this uh, force. So remember, the lever arm is always the distance between the axis of rotation and the what they call the line of action. The line of action is the force, essentially. That's why I extend this line down a little further, because we can clearly see now the straight line distance between the axis of rotation and my line of action would essentially be a line like that. Oops, sorry, it would be a line like this. What am I talking about? The line must be perpendicular. The lever arm must be perpendicular to the uh, line of action. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what's important. Okay, so remember the lever arm here must always form a 90 degree angle uh, with respect to the applied force. Okay, so uh, do we know this particular distance? Well, yeah, fortunately they gave it to us in the problem, right? It's 0.35 meters. So this is 0.35 meters. Okay, so uh, what other forces are acting uh, on the horse? Well, it's the force of the wall, right? The wall is exerting a certain force on this horse, and that uh, force is going to be, I'll call it, uh, it's gonna be centered somewhere around here, right? It's a little lower than the center of gravity because they told us that the center of gravity is 1.4 meters up, and the force of the wall is 1.2 meters up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my force pointing away Okay, extend the line, uh, and I'll call this the force of the wall, right? And um, that's what we're looking to calculate, so that's our question mark. Now, what is the uh, lever arm associated with this particular force? Remember, the lever arm is the distance between the axis of rotation and the force, and it must be per perpendicular to the line of action, or AKA the force vector. So how would I draw that? Well, it would look just like this, right? And here's the 90 degree line. Okay, so now let's see, uh, you know, let's uh, plug in a certain value for that. Now, what would the value of this, whoops, what would the value of this R be? Well, go back to the photo at the top right. Notice they gave us the 1.2 meters, right? That is the vertical distance between the force and where the axis of rotation is. So this R will be 1.2 meters, okay? Uh, now let's see if we have everything uh, we need to know. Okay, so when I now start plugging in or start thinking about a formula, I know this is in equilibrium, so therefore the sum of the torques will equal zero. How many torques are there? Well, there are two, right? Uh, I'll call this one number one and this one then number two. So now as I look to expand on this uh, sum of the torques, I realize that there are two torques in this problem, right? One in red and then one in yellow. So therefore it's going to be torque of one um, plus the torque of two will equal zero. Now at this particular stage, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to um, plug in a negative sign for one of these two, all right? And remembering that uh, torques that produce counterclockwise rotations are positive, torques that produce clockwise rotations are negative. And that being the case here, right? Uh, let me just leave that as, actually, I'm just going to, uh, you, you'll see how I'm gonna change this. 
So in terms of the uh, red torque, right, if the force is applied downward, this would rotate clockwise, uh, excuse me, counterclockwise, and therefore uh, this is a positive torque. So T1 is positive. Okay, and T2 here, if that force is applied, this would rotate clockwise, and therefore the torque is negative for two. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the positive sign, plug in a negative sign, and now I don't have to worry about any other signs in the problem. I can just plug everything in as I see it. All right. Uh, so expanding on T1, I remember this is uh, all the angles between the lever arm and the um, forces are all 90 degrees, so sine of 90 is going to be 1. So therefore this will just work out to be R1, uh, F1, minus R2, F2. That will all equal 0. Okay, great. So now uh, solve, you know, we're looking to solve for F2. So add this on over to the right-hand side. So it's R1, F1 is equal to R2, F2. And then divide out R2 from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to all do that one step. So this is F2, divide that by R2, and then we are good to go. So here is our formula. Now all we need to do is just plug in the values, okay? So here we'll get F2 uh, to be the answer of what's R1. R1 is right here of 0 0.35. Great. Uh, F1, well F1 is going to be the weight, okay? They gave us the mass of 500 kilograms, so the simple 500 times 9.8. And then divide that all by R2. And R2 we found to be 1.2 meters. And there we go. So now let's just throw it into the calculator. So we get a value, so 0 0.3 times 500 times 9.8, all divided by 1.2. And there it is. Rounding to sig figs, it's 1,430, it looks like. right? And that's going to be in terms of uh, Newtons. OK, notice it's positive. So it's pointing in the correct direction that is pointing uh, to the right there. Uh, all right. So, uh, guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Uh, please remember to subscribe and look forward to helping out with the next question. Take care.